What I wanted to say about my uh, music, uh, the, the one that I always remember is this one that's called You Are Near No Matter Where You Are. And uh, like I say, when I was a young kid, I was 3,000 miles from here in Australia. Uh, and if you remember your history, why England were putting all the people they didn't want and dumped them in Australia. That's the kind of people that were supposed to be there at that time. Well, I didn't notice any difference. The people were all nice to me. Maybe it's because I was nice to them. I don't know. But uh, the dysfunctional system in families was awful over there. But anyhow, a drummer comes up to me in the band. He says, I'm going out with a girl, and she has a sister. Do you want to meet her? I said, oh, okay. So I met the sister, and it was in a strictly a platonic friendship. It took her to church and stuff. And after a year, well, anyhow, at the beginning, my mother says to join the Mormon church, so I joined it in Glendale because she told me to do it. And I was only nine or ten then. And then it, when I'm in Australia, after going to church for about a year, two elders come up on my shoulders and say, Brother Hobb, we're going to make you an elder. I said, what? An elder! Well, okay. But I've always respected everything that the church did for me. I didn't know anything about the church. I was baptized and didn't know what I was baptized for. But my mother told me. But I respected that. And the word respect is an important word to learn in your lives as you grow up because you, you're putting a value to yourself as well as, 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 as to the church. So they made me an elder. Well, I'm on the islands and everything, and uh, <coughs> we had a chance to do that. If you look at your map, your Japan was over here, and the, all the islands were on the right hand side and uh, we had to take them all back and because we uh, had interest in those islands and I'll never forget Guadalene. <laughs> it was so small that uh, I went up with a guy with a small airplane and he had to start landing on the water to have enough room to land his airplane on Guadalene. That's how small that island was. But anyhow, we'd go up and down the island. Well, this one time we were on the ship coming back home to Australia and the, all of the islands had a beautiful mystery, mystery to them. And I went into them, almost got lost once, so I stayed out of it after that. It's really something else. But the sand was pearly white, and I mean it wasn't just white, it was pearly white because the sun, the, the, the moon beam would come down and hit that beach, and it was so beautiful that I kept looking at it and I was, I was just awed by it. And, and being on, I love the water and I love boats, so that's the reason I went into the Navy. I just loved it. So, all of a sudden, this song came to me. Well, in the old days, people wrote all the songs that you grew up with and loved to hear, had rules. The Union, it took me 30 years to get this gold car. And I can remember the day getting a letter from the union that says, if you don't know how to play Misty, you're a fraud. Well, Earl Gardner composed Misty while he was on a train going back east and didn't know a thing about music. But anyhow, as I'm on this ship and watching all of the islands and everything, my opening theme was to go up. Now, when you write music, you're allowed to have four measures. You can steal somebody else's four measures of music. That's why I have to read everything, because otherwise I'm playing a different tune by the end of the 32 measures. There's a trombone player, and I think he's one of the Dorsey players that had a trombone. He would go, da da dee, and I don't know where he went after that. But that was my start. Then all of a sudden I was thinking of that, and then... The rest of the music came to me, so that 
I wrote this, and of course I was a young kid, and I was I was romantic. I was no different than any young kid. I'm like. And everybody thinks that I wrote this song, and I probably did because of that one girl that I had coming, going to church with. She was from a dysfunctional family, too. I didn't know anything about her. I didn't know who her mom was, or who her dad was, or anything. And if they served food at her house, the fly would be in because there's no screens on the windows and stuff in those days. But anyhow, this song because of my age, has different meanings. Isn't that something? When I wrote this song, it was strictly for a teenager who was in love with this girl. And if you'll notice the words in all of the songs, they're all dream, dreams. Dream when you're feeling blue, that's the thing to do. You know, it's always a dream. I don't care whose song. I don't care, P.S. I love you. I don't care what the name of the song is. All the lyrics are a dream. It's not for real. Why did I do the same thing? I'm reading the words and I'm saying, you know, it's a dream. So, at my age, and I'll be 90 in February, I'm looking at it from a different angle. My family is near, no matter where you are. If they're in Utah, like I call Bill and he says up, he's up in Utah. He's in my way of thinking because of my song, he's near no matter where he is. Well, that's the way it is with my family. It's amazing. I never thought of that when I wrote that song. This song could actually be used as a multicultural song for all ages. For anybody. And that's where I've come to. But uh, these other songs I wrote because of Alta Thompson. You, you remember meeting her mm -hmm. in the temple, or not her, but her mm -hmm. daughter. Mm -hmm. She sang in the Southern California Mormon choir in those days. And one of the members of the ward in Rancho Vista was happy. And I said, well, why are you happy? She said, she's singing. I said, where? And she said, the Southern California Mormon Temple. I said, well, that's been 50 years old now. And she looked at me and said, how would you know that? I said, look, I, was, I know everything. It's, my, it's, it's wonderful. <laughs> I remember when it started. Alta Thompson was singing in it. Well, she was very good friends with my mother. Well, when I have a Catholic priest, this my cousin. Yeah, I was almost born in Guatemala, and that's that's why I always have that that feeling for the Central American countries. And um, it's it's I I can talk for hours about different things. I don't know why I'm talking so much, but anyhow, she says. Why don't you compose a march? So I, I started composing marches. And uh, I frankly, uh, with the marches, didn't play them much. I don't even remember what they are, but this one I've always been playing it. So do you want to play that one for us right now? Mm -hmm. I can do that. Would you believe I'd have to read it? Pull it apart. I stapled it just so we didn't get them confused. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, when I get through playing this, then I'll, I'll play you some Christmas music. Will that be all right? We're going to do a short game, then we're going to have you play again. Okay. That's what I want to know. <clears throat> Diane, or Steve. <laughs> now, I'm always thinking of this guy with the trombone when I start this piece out. He played beautiful trombone. I think it was the Dorsey yes, boy. One of the Dorsey boys. <laughs>
But that's the... Yeah. That's it. Beautiful.